Hello, Dominic Herbst here with uh, Restoring Relationships. And today, the message is, It is well with my soul. And actually, that's a title that many of you have heard from the great song, anointed so powerfully by uh, God into the heart of Horatio Spafford back in 1873. I'm going to weave in portions of the anointing that he had revealed in that song that is still sung today. And that anointing is so powerful, it is as if it was the day that it was breathed by God's Spirit back at the time that he experienced unspeakable pain. I want to begin, as I normally do, that we have a, to help us remember that we have a spirit, a soul, and a body. The body is the shell. The spirit is the pneuma spirit. We talked about that in previous sessions. Pneuma, P-N-E-U-M-A, pneuma, meaning the breath of God, the wind of God spoken into us. And then there's the Holy Spirit, the sound of the mighty rushing wind. It was uh, brought down, poured down from heaven in the day of Pentecost after Christ has ascended to the right hand of the Father. We have a soul. While we connect in communion with God through the Spirit, the soul is how we experience this life and connect with one another. Obviously, the Spirit cannot be made alive without Christ Jesus being invited into our hearts in a communion of His Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are His children. Let's not forget that. The soul, then, is the connecting agent the part of us, our intellect, our emotions, and our will, as we connect with those we care deeply about in this earthly life until we ourselves are taken into the presence of the Lord. So the place where we interact with one another at the soul, is it well with your soul? Just as our human spirit is regenerated by the Holy Spirit, it is our soul that is restored by the same Christ. Psalm 23, 3, He the Lord restoreth my soul. Soul restoration, if it is well with your soul, brings peace, it brings comfort, affection, communion with those you love. And we are living in extreme and perilous times. It's an amazing test as to whether or not your soul is at rest in peace, and I mean peace as we live, and whether or not your soul is doing well in these times of unpredictable happenings and future. So how is your soul today? We're looking at this virus, this sickness. Every day we're having to contend with all of the new information, what we do, what we are not to do. When will it end? When will the normal come back? What will that normal look like? All of these things create distress within us. And we wonder, is it well within? Maybe you're struggling with wounds and infection from the people that you care about most and that you feel that you've been torn asunder with unspeakable pain, especially in the presence of those you love or those you have loved have gone from you. They've gone from you in death. They've gone from you by separating away. Maybe you've experienced a divorce or a separation that has become so painful. You just don't know what to do because you feel completely helpless. And then there are those that have betrayed you in other ways, offended you, abused you, ridiculed, scorned, rejected, abandoned, whatever it might be. It will create a response within your soul that sometimes will put you in a tailspin. But you know, Ecclesiastes, the wisdom writer Solomon, under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, wrote these words in chapter 7, verse 3. He said, Sorrow is better than laughter, for by the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. That defies logic. We don't want sorrow, we want laughter. And laughter is a wonderful medicine. But the better medicine for, for uh, transformation and cleansing and purifying is godly sorrow. Now, there is a sorrow that is not cleansing. It's actually an agent of contamination. It's worldly sorrow. And it will keep us a world apart from the presence of the Lord. 
So we will actually feel as if he's gone from us. But actually it's the sorrow, almost like a stream taking us away. But it's a polluted, contaminated stream. What we want is to embrace godly sorrow. The experience of his presence deeply, deeply penetrating within our spirit, soul, body, where we are closer to him during the time of pain than we had ever been before that. And that's what we want, a godly sorrow. That's what Horatio Spafford had when he penned these words at the worst time of his life. When peace, like a river, attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll. Sea billows are the waves, five feet, 10 feet, 15 feet, washing over, drowning. He was drowning in sorrow. Yet he was starting off saying, but I have peace. How can that be? Peace in such uh, drowning sorrow. He said, whatever my lot, thou, Lord, has taught me to say it is well. It is well with my soul. This hymn comes from one of the most heart-rending stories of all time. The author, Horatio Spafford, he was born in 1828. He died in 1888. He was a, a, lay, uh, a layman from Chicago that was deeply involved in the evangelistic campaigns of the great Dwight L. Moody and other evangelists of that time. He had established a very successful legal pa uh, practice, and he was good in business, and he had some good investments. Then one day, in one day, the Chicago Fire of 1871 wiped out all of his holdings. He went from great wealth and blessing from God to nothing. Now, I want you to think about that today and how all the businesses around us, many of you have businesses. Many of you work in a business that someone else owns. And all of that has now just been wiped out in a sense that you don't know what the, what the next step is. Some of those businesses may not come back. That's what happened to Spafford. And during that time, just before he lost his holdings, his son had died unexpectedly. So now here he is, his holdings were wiped out. His son dies unexpectedly shortly before that, but the worst is yet to come. His wife and four daughters were, he sent them on ahead to Great Britain to join the campaign that uh, Moody was doing in the, that nation, and, and he was going to come ahead and join them. As they set sail, their ship collided with another ship from Great Britain, and it sank in 12 minutes. He heard about the, the ship the collision, but he had no idea who was saved. The communications at that time were not like they are today. And it was a few days later when his wife made it to the shores of Wales and sent these two most painful words back to, to her husband, saved alone. Meaning all four of his daughters were swallowed up by the ocean. Now it's just he and his wife. His soul is in such sorrow that he can't even speak. When you think about going through something of that nature, it's almost Job-like. Now, who wouldn't begin to question everything about God and who he is and his purposes? And even his wife was quoted as say, saying, Anna, her name was, God gave me four daughters. Now they have been taken from me. Someday I will understand why. She knows she'll be able to ask God in eternity when she's united, when she was obviously united with her daughters. And she knows that answer now. But that doesn't make it any easier that there might be an answer someday. Her daughters were taken from her arms and all she could do was save herself. The soul in that state experiences things that we, you and I, cannot even comprehend or put into words. This is why a obscure verse in Romans 8.26 says that the Spirit itself makes groanings within us that cannot be uttered. Sometimes sorrow and pain and loss is so great that we do not have words 
to even speak. The words won't come because there are no comforting words. There are no words that can somehow make this devastation have look good to me. It's nothing but loss upon loss and multiplied loss. But the Spirit itself makes groanings when we cannot speak. And those groanings are the Holy Spirit within us. And what he wants to do is he wants to pour forth in our worst estate, in our worst sorrow. And he wants to show us, once again, as Job said, after all of his torment, he wants to show us things too wonderful that we knew not. As Spafford uh, went on to a ship to join his wife, the captain notified him as to where his daughters had drowned. That was the grave. That was the only grave he had. It was at that point on the ocean that he went into the bowels of the ship and he penned the words to, it is well, it is well with my soul. Can you imagine more loss than what Spafford had endured? I can't. He was under a word that we, we don't use today, but it's a word of vexation. It's called vexation. In its shallow context, when vexation is now around all of us and what we're facing today, it's the state of being annoyed and, and frustrated or worried. But you see, that's the shallow application of a, of a vexed soul. Truly, vexation in the depths of the soul of what Spafford felt is a vexation of spirit that is so deeply grieved and troubled and perplexed, meaning he would go into a place where he felt as if he was breaking apart at the very core of his being, of who he was. That one part of him, he didn't know what it was. And another part, he was so in the reality of the sorrow, almost as if the, the, the soul had to somehow separate from something too horrific to endure to even think about vexation of spirit. And yet, during the worst of all times, he looked to the Lord. During the worst of all times, he did not blaspheme. He did not uh, yell out in rage against the Lord. Would it have been justifiable? Yes, yes. If you've been so angry at the Lord as I have over the years, and you've cried out, yelled out, yes, yes. And he still loves us just the same. And I got to believe that there must have been moments like that, or at least considered it, but they're not written about. What's most important here is what flowed from him during the time he went into his deepest sorrow at the grave on the, in the ocean. For those four daughters, Annie, Maggie, Bessie, and Tanetta, he was thinking of them and that he would never hold them again. The glorious hope of seeing them, yes, but they were taken from him. So he has to live the rest of his days without those four precious daughters. And as he's in that place, think about that place where you're at today. What are you thinking? How are you feeling? Are you, is your soul vexed to the place where the sorrow or the fear or the worry, the agitation, the discomfort is coming over you? Or are you gonna turn into it? Are you gonna embrace it? Are you gonna embrace the pain? That sounds bizarre. Who embraces pain? Are you gonna look for the as uh, one author, uh, her name is Lovejoy, she wrote the sweet side of sorrow. There's a sweetness in suffering, sweet side of suffering, that if you allow yourself to come into the presence of God instead of withdraw away, your soul will become so amazingly enlightened by the communion of the Holy Spirit, and you will see revelation that God had heretofore not shown you.
because you're coming to him with a sacrifice of pain, a sacrifice of suffering. You're identifying with the sacrifice of suffering that we just remembered this past weekend in the resurrection weekend, the resurrection Sunday, and the suffering on Good Friday. And when you enter into that suffering to that degree, he is ready to bring revelation. He is ready to take you places in this earthly life that very few people will ever go. And he's saying to you right now, out of Matthew 11, 28 and 29, come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Think about that. Or you can go into the place that Jesus talked about when he spoke about the end times in one of the Gospels. He spoke of it in three of the Gospels. And in Luke 21, 26, he said, In the last days, men's hearts will fail them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. You know what that means? Things will become so uh, uh, scary and frightening on this earth, things that we do not have answers for, things that we do not see the origin of or the end to, that men's hearts will fail them in fear. And they will come under that fear and they will become paralyzed and reclusive. Now, he spoke that to say that that's what some of the end time activities or uh, situations will bring. But we don't have to come under that fear. And many of us, we know what that's talking about. Many of us have been paralyzed in fear. Yet the Christ lives within us. And that perfect love of Christ will cast out that fear. He has not ever given us that spirit of fear that comes from the enemy. And he always said through the scriptures, fear not. So if you're in a place that kind of coincides with what Horatio Spafford was, because in a way his whole world completely broke around him. It was destroyed in his eyes and his thoughts. The closest people in his family, all except his wife, were taken from him. And now here he is wondering, what is my lot? And as he sat there writing, he, he said these words, and I'm going to give you three verses, um, and might, I might add the fourth. And in these verses, you have past, you have present, and you have future. But before I read them, because that's where I'm going to close, I want you to know that the anointing on this, these lyrics and this song uh, Philip Bliss wrote the music, composed the music to the song, brought tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, even millions to the knowledge of Christ. And those millions came to Christ long after Spafford had gone on to be with Christ. You want to talk legacy? The impact of what you were called to do in the short, brief time that you're in this world. You want to talk legacy? There's legacy. One event, albeit more painful than we'd ever imagine, and one hymn from that event. Millions. They're still coming. I trust that after you see this, that maybe you'll go on to uh, uh, one of the providers of music and you'll pull up whatever rendition of it as well, and that you will put yourself in the presence of the words so powerfully anointed and let the hymn and the music penetrate your soul and spirit lift you to a place such as you have never known and that you will never be the same after, after 
you sing this song. After you hear this song now, and after, from now on when you sing it, that you'll never be the same, knowing what the price and the sacrifice was. Because had Spafford rebelled against God and said, you're asking too much, or said, you gave one child your son, I gave you five children. And you know what? He didn't do that. He took the sacrifice, he presented it to God, and God poured through him. What could be happening right now within your life? Let me read the verses. Opening with what I, or closing with what I opened with. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, Whatever my lot, that is whatever I experience, whatever I'm going through right now, what I'm going through, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. And then the the refrain, it is well, it is well with my soul. And then the next verse, though Satan should buffet, he is right now, he's been buffeting. He's coming against us constantly. Though Satan should buffet, though trials should come, oh, we're facing trials. The whole world is right now. And you're also facing trials maybe in relationships. So it's all compounded. Though trials should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and has shed his own blood for my soul. You feel helpless? It's all right. He's provided his blood. His strength is made perfect in our weakness. And then the refrain. My sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but the whole, is nailed to the cross. And I bear it no more. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. And lastly, yeah, fourth verse. And Lord, haste the day, here's our future, when the faith shall be sight. Faith is believing in God when nothing makes sense, when you don't see what you really are looking for from him and you get everything the enemy throws at you. So if you look with earthly sight, then your faith comes under fear. But faith conquers fear. And he said, now, O Lord, haste the day when my faith shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound and the Lord shall descend. A song in the night, O my soul. Yeah, 1 Thessalonians, remember? He said, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then we that remained shall be formed, shall be uh, transformed in the twinkling of an eye, twinkling. They can't even measure how, how fast the twinkling of an eye is. Start looking. Because these are the perilous times where we are to look up for our redemption draweth nigh. He's coming soon. Let me pray over you. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we ask that we would have the anointing that Horatio Spafford had. But we know it only comes with offering our current lot, that is what we're experiencing now that we do not like, what we're experiencing in suffering and pain and rejection and abandonment and betrayal. We're gonna offer this fully, completely to you, O oh God, as a sacrifice for your suffering for each one of us on Calvary. And by offering that, we're asking that you would replace it with a godly sorrow that leads to a repentance for not trusting you before this moment. And in that suffering of sorrow that we will be both purified and cleansed when even the sorrow pours over us like sea billows that roll. And out of that, Lord, you will 
reclaim our destiny in whatever time we have left, and that destiny will become our legacy. Bring forth your anointing upon all who have the faith to believe that you're ready to do something so powerful and so amazing into each individual that is going to claim this promise. They're going to claim this anointing, and they're going to proclaim you from their lips of what you have done in them and through them at the time that you suffered most. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. God bless you and look for you uh, next week again. Bye-bye.